I'm here at the Hookway practice field with assistant coach Yuka Maslin and captain and goalkeeper Jeremy Volo for the SU men's soccer team. Now guys, we're talking about goalkeeping and uh, kind of what sets it apart a little bit from the other positions. Yuka, you're a former professional goalkeeper. So really, what's the difference? Uh, what specializes a goalkeeper position from the other positions on the field? Well, first of all, it's a privilege to use your hands. And with the privilege of using your hands, it comes responsibility because everything you do and every mis mistakes you make, you know, it's going to show in the back of the net. Here, you have to be sharp all the time. And part of that is staying connected with your team is that is how you lead your team. You're talking with the team, you hear him 90 minutes of the game, 110 minutes of the game, or however long it takes to win the game, he's talking constantly with his game, with his team. That keeps him all the time connected. Now, Jeremy, when you're on the field, uh, like uh, Coach Maslin just talked about, communicating with their defense, how do you make sure and get your points across that you have the better vantage point on the field? How do you get a position where you want to be and make sure that they take away those scoring chances? Well, I think there needs to be an element of trust right off the bat. I mean. If my defenders trust me, know that I'm going to be telling them, talking to them consistently and telling them what to do, uh, they listen. Uh, so uh, it's like having you know another two set of eyes around you or eyes in the back of your head telling you when a man's coming. You know, it helps me, like Yuka said, to stay in touch with the game, uh, but also prevent those chances from happening. All right. Now let's uh, we're going to run through a couple of uh, scenarios that a goalkeeper commonly has to deal with uh, during a game. Okay. All right, Jeremy, so defending free kicks. Take us through this situation. You got a free kick coming from right outside the 18. What do you do to get set up? Uh, the first thing I have, uh, you, typically my center midfielder. One of the center midfielders is the man who's the point man to set up the wall. So immediately, as soon as the free kick's taken, I find him on the field, make contact with him. He gets over, and I'll tell him how many people I want. All right, so that's going to be my role here. Right. So I'll slide over here. You're going to get set up. You've got a nice little handy wall. Well, the first thing that I do, like, before even setting up, I make sure that the referee is not going to allow them to take it early. Because if I come here and set up on my post, and the referee allows them to go without saying on his whistle, then they can just slot it in the goal, no problem. So I'll ask the ref, I'll say, ref, on your whistle, he gives me that signal, so then I come over here, I set up. I find you, who's my midfielder, and I tell you, like, in this situation, I'd say four. So I put up four fingers, I say, four. You're going to get the other three men who they know exactly who they are and where they're going to be, right? <laughs> Got to have mannequins. And then from there, they're facing the ball. You turn and face me. All right. And then from here, I direct you. I say, stop. Stop. Whichever way I want. When I'm happy, I stop. You stop. You turn around. And then I get set. And we're good. All right, so Jeremy, that's free kicks. What about stopping a breakaway chance, though, when you don't have the defenders to help you out? Yeah, stopping a breakaway is just all about being as big as possible. Um, you know, the keys for me, I, on a breakaway, you want to stay up as long as possible as a goalkeeper, so before going to ground. So it's kind of about patience and reading the touch of the attacker. So you kind of see where the foot is on their ball, how close they're coming, when they're going to strike it, and then you determine whether you stay up, whether you go down, kind of what you do. All right. So let's go try to get a couple examples All of that right. if I'm going to come rushing in on you. So if I'm an attacker and I'm coming in here, when do you decide to commit and come out? Well, I decide to commit when I'm the last defender. When you've beaten that last man and I see that it's just you and I, I'm going to start coming out. And as you take your touches towards me, I come here. And the first thing that I'm looking for is if you take a bad touch. So right there, you had the ball perfectly controlled. So it leaves me no option except to stay up and just be big here. However, if you were to take a touch that was a yard ahead of you. So if I come in and I'm a guy with speed, right. and I you take a touch at, just then to That's when I come out, and that's where I make myself big and attack it. Gotcha. Because you don't have, you're going to be rushing now to get to that ball. So as long as you have it really controlled, I'm just going to come out. I'm going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. If you keep it controlled there, then I'm just going to make an impact stop. However, if I see that big touch, I'm going to come out, you take a big touch, I'm going to come there, I'm going to attack on the floor. That's a good shot. There you go.
Ooh. A little bit of acting there. <laughs> gotta get that TK, you gotta get that. Oh uh, yeah. So Jeremy, breakaways are tough, but perhaps the toughest yeah. shot to stop in all of soccer is the penalty kick. What do you do when you got a guy shooting from 12 yards out? How do you determine which way you're gonna go? Do you guess or do you react when you see the shot? It's, it's a little bit of both. Uh, there's a couple factors that you, you have to take into consideration. The first sign is their plant foot. When they put that ball down, I look at their plant foot and see where it's pointed. Gives me a little bit of indication what they're thinking. Second thing is how they approach. There's certain types, if he approaches really wide, like real wide, the ball's where you are, it's gonna be tough for him to go to his right. He's probably gonna come to his left. Oftentimes those shooters will come from right behind. So the last thing you really look for is their plant foot, where it goes, and then where their hips are. And if their hips are open, they go out. If their hips are closed, they're gonna go across their body. It's like split second decision, so a lot of it's actually guessing because you can't always determine all of that right away to make a decision. Because you pretty much have about the, the span of a blink of an eye to get right. to this ball and knock it away. Right. All right, well, let's see how you do then. All right. All right, now's your guys' chance. I'm gonna hop in there, see if I can put some of these uh, little techniques to good use here. Thanks a lot, Jeremy. Boy, that ball really comes on to you in a hurry. You gotta be quick to stop that. Yeah, it's a tough one. Jeez. All right, well, with Jeremy Volo at the Hookway Practice Fields, I'm Caleb Lamb, Citrus TV.